So this is the Atomos Ninja V Plus. I'm gonna explain why it's great for some, but for me, it misses the mark on so many levels. If you're new to my channel, I like to talk about mirrorless cameras in terms for video. And today's topic, we're actually gonna talk about the Atomos Ninja V. And I don't wanna like bash in this whole video, so let's start with the good stuff and then go on from there as to why, especially as a Windows user, and as an R5 user in the mix, this thing is almost useless. Not quite, but almost. First, okay, good stuff. So the Atomos Ninja V Plus is a monitor that has a lot of settings, a lot of features that is good for recording video professionally. And it actually records to an SSD when installed. I don't have one on it right now because I've got it connected to the computer for what we're going to do. But oh my gosh, like this thing, for what it's capable of doing is an amazing little piece of kit that comes useful now one of the benefits with the r5 r5 can only record 30 minutes before it stops for some stupid rule that used to exist but no longer exists but canon decided to leave it in this thing and probably not upgrade the firmware and say hey when we get the r5 mark ii then you'll have no 30 minute limit but for now this is what you have with the camera so when you have this hooked up to the atomos ninja v plus you can record for longer than 30 minutes. You can record as long as you have space on the hard drive and there's battery in there. So that's great. Solves that problem. And the recording modes, it actually lets you record uh, the 4K, 4K HQ, and it lets you record up to 60 frames per second in 4K. Then it lets you record 5K or 8K RAW through the HDMI, which is great. But that's kind of where I have the problem. So you're gonna see Mm, my frustrations here but for the most part this monitor especially when it comes to just recording basic footage in easy to edit codecs or one easy to edit codec for us windows users prores it's it's a great thing but now let's get to why i feel the way i feel with this monitor okay so a lot of the reason that the monitor is great like i said was no 30 minute limit but now you've got the issue of this monitor is so finicky with this and using it on a Windows computer and working with the files on a Windows computer, whether you work on Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, because Final Cut does not come with Windows and you can't get it for Windows, that leaves us videographers frustrated and nobody really talks about that because a lot of people who do edit on a Windows machine with DaVinci or with Premiere will always use the ProRes files and say that's good enough for me. But the point of getting the V Plus is for the 8K RAW recording because the regular Ninja V only records the 5K cropped mode off of the R5. You can't record in 8K. So you want to get the more beefed up Ninja V Plus to be able to record that higher resolution. But here's the problems with it. First of all, the connection on the R5. Now, this is not the Ninja V Plus's fault but it's a micro HDMI, which makes it so finicky and the slightest little movement and this thing will disconnect. Okay, it's not happening now, but I was actually holding it still for a while, not doing anything and it lost connection, which was frustrating. Second thing, in order to record 8K RAW, you have to make sure that you switch. There's so many settings that you have to switch first on here, then here to HDMI output RAW. Then you have to go back here, turn this off, and then turn that off, and then turn this on, and then turn that on for them to connect. If not, they're gonna be finicky, which is annoying. But let's explore the thing of, okay, you can record 8K RAW, ProRes RAW, which that should be a codec that should be easy and smooth to edit, right? And maybe it, there's some advantage. The one advantage I could think of is you won't have that 30 minute time limit. Oh, okay, let's think of another advantage, is the fact that if you're running low on space on your card and CF Express Type B cards, I have one here that's like uh, two terabytes. These kind of cards can be kind of expensive. So, you know, you, you, if you're running out of space, if you can record 8K RAW because you need RAW footage, you can put it into here and kind of work with it. But let's go do the computer and see, can you really? Here I am. Now, there's, these are a ton of complaints that I've got with these files. Now, we're on a Windows computer because, remember, if you have the Atomos Ninja V+, Plus and you want to use those RAW files in Windows, this is kind of what you're stuck with. 
Now, first things first, when using the Atomos, you can record in regular ProRes and then ProRes RAW. Now, the ProRes files themselves are like butter to work with. You can play them right off your computer, and they're in C log 3, and you don't really have an issue. I'm playing it here just slightly. It's a little skippy because I'm running several things off of this hard drive. But for the most part, not an issue. You're good. So, but the trick comes with these ProRes RAW files. But here are the ProRes RAW files that I recorded while I was out today just to record a sample. Now, I purposely, when I recorded these files, I recorded them 10,000 Kelvin, so it's really orange, the footage. Now, if you double click on the footage on the computer, it's not going to play. They look like .movs, but they're not going to play because they're ProRes RAW files. So that's one thing. You can't really see your footage or how it came out if it's outside the camera. Now, that's normally not a problem, but when you import that footage into Premiere Pro, okay, so we're looking at Premiere Pro right now. So now I said 10,000 Kelvin, so it's really warm, these temperatures. And these ProRes RAW files, and this is one of them, I actually turn down the temperature, because if I reset this, this is how the footage actually looks. Not looking like I wanted it to be that orange, especially on a, a bright day. So I, I turn down the temperature. Now here, let's look at the effects controls that we can work with on a ProRes RAW file, because you can not import ProRes RAW files into Windows, but then all you have control of is exposure and the color space. That's it. And I chose D-Log for this, so I can choose Cinema Gamut C-Log 2, but where's the C-Log 3? There is no C-Log 3. It's got all of these different formats, of course, but none of them is really C-Log 3 for a Canon camera, because it's the camera itself that's recording this. Now, I chose a different one just to see if I can get it to look at least a little bit more natural. And then from here, when I'm doing the edits, I simply turn down the temperature as much as possible and then turn up the tint a little bit just to get it to look a little bit more normal or a little bit more along the lines of where I wanted it to be. ProRes RAW should be smooth, but yet on my computer, which has an NVIDIA RTX 3070 Ti card, uh, with uh, 64 gigs of memory on a really fast uh, AMD processor, it it plays just fine for a few seconds and then it stops, even though I have it at 1 16th. But the footage itself, you can't really adjust ISO, which is one of the main purposes of RAW for such huge files. So why not just record ProRes and get what you want? There's no point in recording ProRes RAW. And it, it, it's pretty unfortunate. Now, did I waste my money? Now, I recorded in several formats when I recorded ProRes RAW. I could record in 8K RAW. Now, you, hear, you see 8K RAW right here. But then I can also record in cropped 5K up to 60 frames per second, which is pretty amazing, which I'm, I'm really happy that you can record RAW at 60 frames per second. But if you can't really use it in Premiere Pro, you can use it even less in DaVinci Resolve because DaVinci Resolve does not work with ProRes RAW files at all, unfortunately. This is some of that footage, but this is in a different circumstance, and I'll show you what that means in a bit. So, in order to work with ProRes RAW, I had to get a program called Assimilate that actually came with the Atomos Ninja V Plus recorder because they knew I would probably really need something, or as a customer, I'm going to be upset. So I got this pro program, Assimilate. Now, I'm not going to show you because long story short, what it does, it turns your ProRes RAW into Cinema DNG, and it's got several compression modes. Now, I've compressed it in its highest compression that the software offers, which is 4 to 1. Cinema DNG, yes, you can actually use it on DaVinci Resolve, and I use the highest compression. So one would think, okay, highest compression Cinema DNG, will probably make these files smaller because this entire folder, which I only recorded a few minutes of ProRes RAW, is 36.2 gigabytes. Now I took those same files, compressed it four to one, and 35.1 gigabytes. So it doesn't even really help from a space saving alternative. So it's like, what's the point? I just had to waste a lot of time. Now this is probably like three minutes worth of footage, 
that probably took a half an hour worth of outputting three minutes worth of footage on my computer. So that in itself tells you if you record a, long, a lot of footage, you better have like half a day to a day to reprocess it and a lot of hard drive space. So now Cinema DNG files have never been the greatest because if you don't know anything about Cinema DNG raw files, these type of files are essentially pictures for each frame and then an audio file. And the software should be able to read it. But when I try to import Cinema DNG files into Premiere, it does not work. You simply get an error, and I'll, I'll try to import one of these Cinema DNG files. Boom. An error that says unsupported format or damaged file. So you can't even work with that. So the only option, if you convert the RAW so that you can actually use the RAW controls, is DaVinci Resolve. Now, I brought the files over in DaVinci Resolve, and obviously they're editable. So this is one file. I didn't change the resolution to match it, so don't excuse that. But... See, as you can see, I filmed very warm, but up here I have, if I go to the color tab and then I go all the way to the left to the camera raw settings and I check clip, I can basically change the color space to different ones like Rec. 709 and, and P30 and Blackmagic Design. I'll keep it at Rec. 709 and the gamma can be updated as well. So I'll change the gamma to Rec. 709. This is a pretty standard shot, but then from here I can update the color temperature from something that it should be. I'm going to say 3900 to get it a little cooler. And now you see the footage looks a lot better compared to how I had it. So those raw controls are very important, very useful. And when you compare that to just using the temperature controls in Adobe Premiere from the actual raw files, that only helped a little bit but not really because it's just baking over the footage and it's not a real uh, white balance change it's like almost like why am i recording in prores raw but fine let's say you need it and you're willing to, to put up with that and you and you get it going fine you can actually edit off of the cinema dng files here or you can go do the color correction in davinci resolve and then import the out, the output files from davinci resolve into Adobe Premiere and then work from here just to get the files working. And then of course you're working off of them. So now we have the, this is actually output off of DaVinci Resolve. It's 5K raw, 60 frames per second that was output as a file and it works just fine here. But that's the thing, you have to do all of that work just to get the files to work for you. You have to convert the footage, and if you want to work off of Adobe Premiere with a be better color-corrected footage that was worth recording off of the recorder, you had to bring it into DaVinci Resolve first, which is free software. You can get the upgraded, but you can still color-correct an output free in DaVinci Resolve. But the other caveat is if you get the free version, you can't output a video that's higher resolution than 4K, which almost defeats the purpose of of recording 5K or 8K. You would want to work with the 8K files in Adobe Premiere. Unless your, your, your final output is 4K anyway and you just did all what you needed to do with the footage in DaVinci Resolve first. But of course, if you've got the paid version, which is not that much, or you can get it free with the Blackmagic camera, then when you're outputting, you can output it to a higher resolution and it shouldn't be an issue. But that's what you get. And quite honestly, like the, the type of files that you work with are, are pretty good uh, once you do all of that work. But the R5 itself, this camera brings an extra option internally that almost makes this pointless. And that is, sure, you can't record 60 frames per second 5K RAW or 5K RAW in general. So the Atomos Ninja V Plus recorder does offer that benefit. However, when you record actual RAW, internally RAW, let me show you one thing that's pretty darn special. Now, of course, I had to record it separately because it can't do external and internal RAW at the same time, which would be amazing. So I'll only record a little little tidbit only like less than five gigs but this five gigs and that's i have a sample right here this this is from the uh canon raw file it gives you in not only davinci resolve 
but in Adobe Premiere, the temperature settings, the exposure settings, the tint, the color space, which is true Canon color space based off of the camera that we're working with. And it allows you to adjust it to what would look the absolute best. And it plays pretty good on my computer. Usually, most of the time. Sometimes if I've got too many things running, it won't. And it also depends on the speed of the hard drive. But it looks just fine. I'll show you the temperature that I had the thing on. So originally, I had this as a temperature. And as you can see, it was really, really orange. But when I adjust it, this, it looks a heck of a lot better. Still kind of blue, but we can change that. And this white balance at 5000 Kelvin looks a ton better when compared to what I originally recorded it as. And it all recorded internally in the camera without the Atomos Ninja V. And there's just so much easier control. Now, when we think about the, the megabytes per second, we're not talking megabits, but actually megabytes per second, that is recorded when I tested the files off of the Atomos Ninja V Plus with its ProRes RAW versus the internal Canon light. It's actually 162 megabytes per second versus 265 megabytes per second. What does that mean? The 162 megabytes per second was the Canon RAW light from internally in the camera versus 265 megabytes per second externally through the Atomos Ninja V Plus, both for 8K footage. Both same frame rate, 8K footage, 24 frames per second. Huge difference. You lose less space when using the RAW from the camera internally versus externally through the Atomos Ninja V+. And it's so much easier to work with Canon's footage versus the footage from the Atomos Ninja V+. Specifically, not for editing, but specifically for to start your edit without having to do all of these conversions. And if you were just gonna work off the Atomos Ninja V raw files right here to just edit without doing white balance correction, the only benefit I see would be if you already got the white balance correct and all you wanna do is use a different style of raw codec that takes up more space than you need on your camera. But that's about it. Why would I record 8K raw? I could see 5K RAW, if I want to do RAW in slow motion for a few clips, up to 60 frames per second, I could do 5K RAW off of the Canon R5. I can see its use if I want to record video in ProRes, because ProRes is easy to edit with, and ProRes is a good codec for me to work with in post for this camera, so that's great. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I know I said a lot of things, and there are, again, a lot of advantages using a cheaper hard drive versus buying a more expensive, more expensive CF Express Type B card. I could understand that. Or all the feature controls in the monitor. Or just having a backup to your recorded footage, which the R5 can do already internally. So, or just the easier to edit files to work with. But again, a lot of advantages, but a lot of difficult editing advantages when using the RAW. So, I don't know. Let me, go to what you, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And as always, like, share, and you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later.